Hi everyone, welcome back to Ways of the World, a brief global history with sources. As we continue our study of milestones of the past century, a changing global landscape, we're going to look at toward freedom and struggles for independence. So let's start with struggle for decolonization. So there's a focus on colonial role of subordination, poverty, and racism, and it signaled declining legitimacy of empire and race as a credible basis for political or social life. In the late 1940s, the Philippines, India, Pakistan, Burma, Indonesia, Syria, Iraq, Jordan, and Israel achieved independence. By the mid-1950s to mid-1970s, over 50 African colonies achieved independence. And in the 1970s, Samoa, Fiji, Tonga, the Solomon Islands, and Kiribati all achieved independence. The Bahamas, Barbados, Belize, Jamaica, Trinidad, Tobago became ind independent in the 1960s and 1970s. And Cuba became independent in 1902, but rejected American control in 1959. All right, the end of empire in world history. So the end of empire associated with nationalist ideology happened for the first time. And that, thus we see a claim of international status. Many empires fell in the 20th century, the Austrian and Ottoman empires after World War I, the Russian Empire, the German and Japanese empires with World War II. The national self-determination idea started to grow and global acceptance became the norm in the 20th century. Empires thus were without territory and came under attack. For example, U.S. involvement in Latin America in the Mexican Revolution. In the last territorial empires, fell at the end of the 20th century, the Soviet Union in 1991, and uh, China is the only one that remained intact. All right, toward independence in Asia and Africa. So democratic European state values and the national self-determination went against the ideas of colonial rule and its realities. So why now? Well, Europe weakened by the two world was weakened by the two world wars. Europe no longer was seen as morally superior. And the new superpowers, the United States and the USSR, um, were against the older European colonial empires. And the European colonies were vulnerable without local elites or the educated Westerners to help support them. And then let's talk about the social economic factors for anti-colonial movements. These second and third generation of educated elites insisted on immediate independence. They didn't feel colonial rule was necessary for progress. And the common people increasingly became receptive to this idea. And the colonial rulers then went on the defensive. They planned for decolonization that included political reform, investments in mass transportation like railroads, ports for trade and telegraph lines for communication, elections, and constitution writing. And it took lots of pressure from the nationalist movements. All right, the end of empire in Africa and Asia. So in the second half of the 20th century, under pressure from nationalist movements, Europe's Asian and African empires dissolved into dozens of new independent states, dramatically altering the structure of international life. So which European colonial power gave up its colonies late in the decolonization process? The Portuguese held on to their empire until the middle of the 1970s. To what extent did the colonial era provide the framework for the post-colonial political boundaries of Africa, South Asia, and Southeast Asia? For the most part, the new colonial states adopted the same political boundaries imposed on them by the Europeans in the 19th century. All right, military struggles for independence. While many colonies won their independence through peaceful political pressure, others found it necessary to adopt a military strategy. This photograph shows an assembly of Algerian fighters from the National Liberation Front, the NLF, in 1960. Established in 1954, the NLF was the major nationalist organization in Algeria that led the country to independence from France in 1962, following a bitter and violent eight-year struggle. 
So what lasting effects could militant independent movements have on the nations that adopted the strategy of gaining independence? Well, there are different reasons, but one that sticks out is that the militant independence movements often have difficulty consolidating mass public support for their policies once independence is won, and states fracture and may subsequently fail as a result. All right, let's talk about nationalist movements. So they were mostly male leaders, well-educated. They developed organized political parties. They recruited, they planned strategies, they developed ideas, and they negotiated with the colonial state. And some became, quote-unquote, fathers of the country. Some directed military, the military and administered to liberated areas, and they sought to join the modern world of other independent nation states, uh, the UN, and, and really emphasized modern technology. And these leaders had to recruit followers. For example, Gandhi's millions of nonviolent followers, um, the rarely cohesive groups of oppressed peoples, tensions with one another, like the Indian National Congress leader Mahatma Gandhi rejected industrialization. Uh, but his lieutenant, Nehru, embraced it. And Gandhi was nonviolent, held everyone equal, and tried to improve the position of women and the untouchables in India. And some thought these efforts distracted from independence. And the Hindu-Muslim divide in India was significant. In 1947, India became Pakistan, which is predominantly Muslim, and India, mostly Hindu. And the nationalist movements varied from one another. They were independent in years or decades. Some distant colonial powers or uh, European settlers were definitely the minorities. And these peaceful political pressures um, could turn into an armed struggle. Some didn't, but that was possible. And the different ideologies, or there are different ideologies for seeking independence. Uh, in India, in the Islamic world, uh, it was religious, or it could be secular. Uh, Marxism and communism as well were part of those different ideologies. All right, here's a picture of Mahatma Gandhi on the Salt March, the most widely recognized and admired figure in the global struggle against colonial rule was Mohandas Gandhi, often known as Mahatma or "quote unquote" Great Soul. He's shown here with his granddaughter Ava on the left, and his personal physician, Dr. Shushila Nayar, on the right. How did nonviolent protests, such as the Salt March, affect the global response to the independence movement in India? Well, nonviolent protests for independence won sympathy for colonized peoples and their independence struggles, and this sympathy put political pressures on European governments to grant their colonies independence. All right, after freedom. Now, there are common conditions for creating a new political order like the exploding population, diverse cultures, and the growing public employment as the state assumed more responsibility for economic development. Europeans had established democratic institutions in many colonies before colonial rule ended, and the idea worked best in India. Elsewhere, it was pretty fragile or degenerated into corrupt personal tyrannies or quote-unquote big man dictatorships. And dozens of military takeovers began in Africa in the early 1980s due to those conflicts. And multiple military interventions took place in Latin America in the 1960s and 1970s. And the globalization of democracy didn't happen until really the late 20th century. Under popular movements, uh, multi-party elections, new constitutions in many countries, Spain, Portugal, Greece, for example. And democracy was increasingly viewed as a universal principle. And the authoritarian governments failed to fix economic situations, and there's a growth of civil society, thus leading to the increase of democracy. And some leaders and governments turned authoritarian or corrupt in office, and that also led to the increase of dem democratic views as a universal principle. And that concludes our study of Toward Freedom, Struggles for Independence. I, see, I will see you guys next time.